Hey guys, John Coast Beer Guns. Thanks for taking a look at the new series from Wood to Water. And essentially in a nutshell, that's exactly what this is. It follows a spear gun from block to body shaping to final build. And then we deliver it to the lucky customer, uh, wherever they may be in the state, out of the state, doesn't matter. Um, we are just looking to do interesting builds and take them to the customer and spend a day with them on the water, hopefully harvesting fish. And if we're lucky, we can throw a few good cooking recipes in there and make this some very entertaining content for you guys. Um, who better for our first build than uh, Captain Aaron Young? You guys know him as Key West Waterman. Great guy, we've known him for years. Uh, we've worked with him on a couple builds, the Banana Gun and the uh, 34 Grover, both great models. And now he's looking for something to attack the Pelagics in the blue water which would be something in the 60 to 62 inch range, uh, Euro, bigger body. And he gave me some of his specs he'd like to see, some of his input, which obviously he has a ton. He shot plenty of Wahoo, and we're gonna put our technical input into it and see what we come up with. Um, and then we're gonna deliver it down to him and spend a day out on the water and hopefully we can land some fish with it. Uh, this series is really geared around uh, getting back to when I started this company, which was years and years ago. Uh, just building custom guns. I used to build four to five guns at a time. It was, it was a much different time. We do everything in volume now, obviously. We have a lot of great dealers and we sell a lot direct from our warehouse. And um, what was really fun was doing the custom builds, the one-offs, and a lot of times I delivered them personally or I knew the people personally and would spend a day out on the water with them anyway. And the whole premise of this is to get back to that because that was, that was a great time. And it, it's very entertaining and it's great content. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it and get those blocks. All right, first thing we have to do is pull down a couple blanks. For Aaron's gun being a blue water model, um, we're gonna be using blue water blanks. We have our blank forest up here. Um, usually this is full, but it all depends on how much teak we got coming in at the time. Um, it comes in surges. Sometimes we have 350 blanks up here, other times we have 20. But right now we have a decent amount. So I'm just gonna grab a couple nicely figure blanks, pull them down and bring them over to James to straighten out. Um, we never know how these are gonna turn out. Like the outside of this has some really nice figuring, but as we start taking the outside layers away and straightening it and milling it down, it could be a totally different gun by the time we get to that raw body size before we really start shaping it. shaped or blank straightened tracked poured um, they go over here to the CNC uh, basically what CNC is is that stands for computer numeric control it's essentially a robotic router that works on an XY axis and uh, basically I'm telling the router where to go how deep to plunge what bit what diameter depth everything and I have to sit here for the next four or five hours and start to work on the programming, the prototyping and the testing 
and we do two of these blanks because chances are I'm gonna make a mistake on one of them. But um, once I have it dialed in, it's dialed in. That's the beauty of the CNC. Um, it took me years to learn it. It's uh, the easiest way to explain it. It's essentially a language. And at first, just like any language, you're rough at it, but I've been doing this for a long time, and every year I've become a little bit better at the language, and now I'm fairly fluent in it. So um, I'm gonna take some really cool shots, some good time lapse, slow motion, up close video of it, so you can really see how the gun takes shape. After that, we'll move on to sanding, coating, and then assembly. So let's get to it. After hours of programming and trial and error, CNC machining, trying out different bits, trying out different shapes, seeing what we like. Uh, we have two working prototypes. Uh, they've been through the machining, the roundovers, everything like that. Um, now it's going to go to sanding and then coating, and, uh, and then it goes over to assembly. And then we'll have something, a nice working prototype that we can bring down to them. Haven't put it through the paces, see if we're lucky enough to bring in a Wahoo or some other Pelagic, and uh, I'm sure we'll have a few more tweaks to make on it, but I mean, so far it's it's a great blue water, great blue water Euro. So we're just gonna keep tweaking a little bit at a time and get it right where he wants it.
here they are. All rigged up, finished, ready to go. Um, this is uh, 62 inches of uh, Wahoo poking stick. Uh, I think Aaron's really gonna like them. They, uh, we did two different variations. We did one with a 100 meter reel, with an inset 100 meter reel as a different ballast point. And this one is using a 916 small ID band. Whereas the other model is rigged for a breakaway and has different ballast point and is using 5 8 uh, power bands. And the difference between the two, I know it doesn't sound like much, but 5 8 regular ID and 916 small ID are essentially the same band in terms of power. Um, what I mean by ID is the inside diameter. The inside diameter of the small ID is a sixteenth of an inch, where the regular ID, which is pretty much your standard band, is eighth of an inch. And believe it or not, they both have a different feel when you pull them back. The only downfall with the um, 916 band is being a small inside diameter and you're trying to get beads in there, especially if you don't have a setup for it, it is a struggle to get anything into those bands because the hole is so tiny. Um, but they do seem to have a smoother pull and a smoother return when you pull the trigger. And same with the 5 8 having an eighth inch ID, um, they both have the same wall thickness, but with that heavier diameter, for some reason, it just has a different feel to it. So, like I said, same wall diameter on both of them, just one's a smaller package. So. I'm going to bring both these variations to them. I just got the call from Aaron. We have a small window, very small window. Uh, so basically, we're just going to load up the truck and uh, head down to Key West. 